I'd like to show you a uh, phase array calibration. Um, my Epic 1000i and I attached a 16 element transducer and I want to show you how to do a, uh, a quick uh, calibration using an IIW type 2 block. Um, what I'm using today is the Olympus 5L-16A10P. That's a, a 16 element transducer. When you plug the transducer in the back here, uh, the phase array, it's a smart uh, transducer. It will automatically pull up, and this is the phase array uh, probe setup screen. It will pull up your probe ID that's stored inside here. So um, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you couple between your transducer and your wedge. So if we look at the screen, S-scan is your sectorial scan. You do a linear scan or a sectorial scan. I'm going to do a linear scan. And in this menu, Probe ID, again, it shows um, the probe I'm using. It's a smart probe. It will uh, select the ID for you. Then there's a wedge ID, and this is a menu. Uh, different wedges that Olympus makes, or you can even use custom wedges. Um, in this case, I'm using a SA10P-N is in Nancy, 55S is in Sugar. That's the type of, of angle beam wedge I'm using. Thickness of the part, not necessary this time, but diameter. Uh, that's for uh, circumferential type of scans. Uh, the, the CSC, let's leave that off. Velocity. We have a selection of different velocities. I'm going to uh, set it for uh, carbon steel, uh, 0.128 inches per microsecond. And my start angle is 40 degrees. I'm going to sweep from 40 degrees to 70 degrees. So start angle 40 and angle 70. We have 30 degrees of sweep, uh, 1 degree per step. My aperture is 16, meaning I have 16 elements. First element is 1. And when you put the transducer on the wedge, here's element 1 in the back. And on your wedge, it says element 1. Make sure you put the 1 back here uh, and on the uh, 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 shallower side. And then the focal depth, I'm just going to hit unfocused. Hit the return key, and our screen will come up, and uh, I have it set up for a scan and a sectoral scan. Both are viewed here. This over here is my A scan, your typical A scan that you see with conventional UT. Then here's my S or my sectoral scan. Now, like I said, I'm going to use a uh, uh, type 2 IIW block. From the zero, I have a 2 inch radius and a 4 inch. Let me flip this guy over. And this calibration is going to be basically kind of a three part calibration. Um, this, this line right here, what that is, that is the front of my wedge. On your sectoral scan, you can set it up so that there's a cursor or a line here. It shows that's the front of my wedge. So I'm going to come down here to phase array. Well, let's phase array probe, uh, pulse uh, repetition rate. This is a 5 megahertz transducer. And um, filtering is a uh, 1.5 to 8.5 uh, megahertz. But let's come down to the calibration. And this is a three part calibration right here on your P7 calibration. If I press that rotate, it says Cal Gain, Cal Velocity, Cal Zero. I'm going to start by doing Cal uh, Velocity. Here we go. P7 Cal Velocity. There's my 1.28, uh, 0.128 uh, uh, inches per microsecond velocity. And then I'm calibrating velocity with the sound path. Now, let me take some... Uh, couple it here and couple my trans uh, my IIW block right now I have my angle I can set my angle at different degrees and I'm gonna set it at 40 degrees and then let's put this guy on here and here's my beam index point but but one thing with uh oh, oh 
pardon me, let me change my range to 5 inches. Since I'm using the Type uh, 2 block, it has a 2 to 4 inch radius. So I want to change my range to 5 inches so I can uh, capture uh, both the 2 and the 4 inch radius. And um, what I want to show is, is uh, the beam index point. I put it on here. There is no beam real. Well, there's a beam index point, but depending on the angle, it changes on your wedge. So as far as your beam index point goes, uh, don't bother with it. What I'm going to do, I'm looking here at my A scan, and you can see I have the C scan too, um, or excuse me, the S scan. I have my 2 and my 4 inch radius. I put a little bit of amplitude in there so I can see this guy. That's yeah, my 2 inch radius. It may be kind of hard for you to see. But I'm going to hit my peak memory. And let me take a little more dB out of here. Let me find the peak of this guy. Right there, my 40 degree angle. Shooting down my 2 inch radius under here. I take off peak memory. And I'm taking that to... 80% full screen height, and I have my gate here capturing that 2 inch radius. Well, down here it says depth 1 and 2. Press depth 1, and that's my 2 inch radius. So we'll change this to the 2 inch, and then hit the check mark to continue. Then I go to my gate and move it over to capture that 4 inch radius. There it is. Auto 80 that. That's going to be my depth 2. Depth 2 is 4 inches. Tell the machine is 4 inches. Press check to continue. And my velocity calibration is complete. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to calibrate 0. And that's to calibrate the time to 0 in your wedge. So um, here we go. This guy's done. Slightly changed my velocity from 0.128 to 0.1273. That's to be expected. And to do my um, <clears throat> my depth calibrate, I'll come here to uh, calibrate zero. And let's take a look at uh, the calibration cal zero hit P7. It was on a velocity. I rotate the cal zero and cal mode. This is important. I'm going to use this 0.6 deep hole, side drill hole, and I'm going to use that to uh, calibrate um, the zero, to calculate the zero of my um, of my wedge. So uh, what I want to do is change P7, calibration cal zero. This is very important, cal mode, press that, it's in sound path, change that to depth. We want to cal the zero to this depth. Now since this depth is only point six inches down. I'm going to change my range. I don't need five inches. I'm going to change my range to like two inches just to make life a little simpler. Two inches. Let's take a look at my gate. Let's change the start of my gate. Bring it back here right there. That's the start of my gate. I'm going to bring it back here to like the front of my wedge. This is my 40 degree sectoral scan, 70 degree. Move the gate back to start and let's take the uh, with my gate and we'll bring it that's the 70 degree we'll bring it right out to about here and for my amplitude or my level i have like 18 percent i'll show you one uh in a minute why i do it that way so now two inch range um cal zero depth let me uh put some coupling on this guy and let's find that 0.6 deep hole it was it, i'm set at 40 degrees let me add some gain in here. Get this out of the way. Put some gain in there. Take a little gain out. 40 degrees. And what I want to do is I want to peak this guy. Come here. Let's uh, peak memory. 40 degrees. I'm looking at that 0.6 deep hole. Right there. I'm pretty much I'm right at the peak. Let me take that to 80% full screen height. Now let me hit start. It's going to ask me how deep is that hole. It's 0.6 inches deep. Change it to 0.6. Hit the check. Now we get this graph here. What I want to do, watch as I slide this probe back from 40 to 70 degrees. 
watch what this line does. It falls right about in the middle. Right about in the middle. I'm back to about 70. Whoops, I got a little crazy there. And you also see on my sectoral scan how that is moving across at that same depth. Back and forth. And I pretty much have that in the center. Rolls off a little bit because we're back here at 70 degrees and we have some attenuation. I'm happy with that, so let me hit done. Now my zero is calibrated. The last thing we want to do is we want to hit calibration P7. The third step, we want to calibrate gain. And what we're going to do, this is TVG or time very gain. As I move away from this hole, uh, the signal will attenuate and drop off. And we want to compensate for that electronically to do a time varied gain. And that's why I have my gate level down around 18, 10 to 18% full screen height. Because as I pull back, you will see um, how this, how dramatically um, this guy will roll off. So let me peek him again. And we'll hit add. I'm at 40 degrees right now. We'll hit add, and again I'll get a screen, and we will pull back on this screen, and that looks good. I just pulled back. We don't want to exceed 100% full screen height, but that is kind of uh, uh, the curve, and you can see as we get out in the higher angles, out around 70, how it attenuates. So, I'm happy with that curve. It's in here. Let me hit done. Now I'm, I'm done. Let me pull up here and what that does for us, this time varied gain, is I just moved my 40 degrees up and look at my amplitude is sitting at 80% uh, full screen height. They're very close to it. Now let me change the angle of my scan and let's change it to 60 degrees so you can see there's our angle, 60 degrees, this is our gate. This red line is our angle, if you can see that. And let me pull back and watch that signal, that sectorial scan, as it comes back and we hit, sorry, I've lost some of my coupling. We hit, um, let me couple this guy up again. Let me pull back right there at 60 degrees. I'm striking just about well, a little bit low, 80% full screen height, but you can see, there it is. It's just my coupling. It compensated. Instead of having that roll off attenuation, 80% full screen height when I pull back at 60 degrees. Now let's take a look at 70 degrees. Pull back, watch this guy. Comes all the way back, boom. That side drill hole, 0.6 inches deep, is... Again, 70 degree, or excuse me, 80% full screen height. So what it does, electronically um, compensates. We see here, time varied gain, Cal zero. As we pull back, it will electronically compensate for the, the uh, time varied distance, the gain, and it will, it will increase the gain as we pull back so that no matter what angle we're looking at, we're seeing a, uh, a, a, about an 8% full screen height.